Okay, well, I think we'll go ahead and get started. First of all, thank you for joining today. Uh, my name is Kelly Mallet. I'm one of the clinical application specialists with ERAD. Today, we're going to go over procedure plans. When we get done with the PowerPoint, I will um, save some time for questions. If you have any, just please make sure you unmute. And um, if you can't get it unmuted for some reason, just send a message in the chat. Can all of you see my screen okay? I'm gonna take that as a yes, because yes. I'm not. Okay, thank you, since I'm not hearing any no's. <laughs> all right, so we'll go ahead and get started here. Oh, sorry, my screen keeps going. There we go. All right, so what is a procedure plan? Procedure plans are actually scheduling codes. They're not actual procedure codes. Um, basically, what they are is a plan that involves two or more procedures within them. And when scheduled, it blows out those exams into the scheduling um, module and then it also knows how much time is required between each one of those exams when you're configuring a procedure plan you're going to go to the procedure plan lookup table procedure plans are typically created for exams that have steps um, arthrograms nuclear medicine biopsies um, where it's pretty highly used is also with like mammography procedures when you are scheduling a diagnostic mammogram that also needs an ultrasound to follow but it can be used in a multitude of ways um, it's it's not there's no set rules um, how you want to use it when building a procedure plan there's multiple things to consider basically what you want to name it do you want these exams reported together which exam is going to be your primary exam and how much time do you want between these exams, which can be pretty um, important if you are using contrast. The naming of the exam, um, it can be anything you would like it to be, but we highly suggest using a PP, which stands for procedure plan, in front of the name. Um, basically, this helps your schedulers easily identify that it's a procedure plan. For the example below, it is set up as procedure code 3D MAMO ultrasound bilateral with a name of PP bilateral 3D MAMO and ultrasound and description to match. That's just a pretty easy um, naming guideline. And you also want your procedure code plans to make sense so that it's easily identifi identifiable. Now, do you want the reports to be together? So, in a sense, um, in, in essence, uh, linked, same, same meaning. So, basically, you would come into the table and mark the report together flag as a yes. If you do not want these two or three exams reported onto the same um, dictation, you would mark that as no. Which exam is your primary exam? So the first exam in your series should be at the top and have a sequence that equals zero. You also are going to want to add duration to each of these exams. This really only comes into play if it's going to be different than what you already have set in your procedure code table. If you leave that blank, it will automatically default to what you have in your procedure code table. Then you're going to want to choose which exam is going to be your primary exam for dictating by placing the Y again in the primary study flag column. How much time is allowable between exams? So you're going to want to add the minimum and maximum times for the second study. The minimum time typically is going to be at zero because you've already given your first exam its duration. The maximum time is going to be whatever you think like if it's a, a mammogram <clears throat> pardon me that is set um, for eight o'clock and it's got a half hour time span but you can go all the way to nine o'clock as far as um, doing the ultrasound so that you have more time slots available you could make your maximum start time at 30. in this example um, the mammo is set at zero as you can see here Oops, excuse me, let me go back. 
at zero, the primary study flag is set at Y because the MAMO is going to be the primary study and the maximum wait time that's highlighted there is set at 30. So basically what that means is that the ultrasound could be, if an, a mammogram is set at eight o'clock, the latest ultrasound could be scheduled at nine o'clock, but it could be scheduled at 8.30 or 8.45 as well. To add a new procedure plan, pardon, you're going to click here to add a new row at the top of the procedure plan. Then you're going to put the Y and the report together flag if you are wanting to report them together. Then you're going to add your procedures to your plan by highlighting the procedure plan and then finding your exams below and using the arrow to the right to add them to the plan procedures. So in this, on this screen, you can see that the first exam is the fluoroscopy exam and the sequence is set to zero. That means that that is the first exam to be done in this procedure plan. The primary study is actually set to the CT and marked with a Y. So that'll be the primary exam that um, the reporting goes on, even though the report will be applied to both exams. The max wait time between them is 15 minutes, meaning that if the fluoroscopy was at eight and it's a half hour exam, then your um, CT could be scheduled at 8.30 or 8.45 being the max. Scheduling view. So when the schedulers schedule, this is where that PP kind of comes into play and makes it easy for them to actually identify the procedure plans. All I did in that top section is type in a PP and you can see that it started to list the procedure plans. So the highlighted arthrogram is the one that is chosen. And then once it's clicked, you can see in the next um, diagram, what happens is that it blows out or basically puts both exams as an order A and then has your times there that um, are allotted for each exam. So you have both your fluoroscopy and your CT. Below are the times that were offered um, based on the minimum and maximum rules. So it was set, um, the minimum being zero and the maximum being set at 15 minutes after the prior exam. Well, if you recall back on this screen, the fluoroscopy is a 45 minute duration. So it's giving the fluoroscopy at eight o'clock and the CT at 8.45. But technically with a maximum um, set at 15 minutes after, this exams or these exams could have been set for eight and nine o'clock as well. Here's an example of a shoulder arthrogram with a CT. So essentially what they did is they did their fluoro as their primary exam, or I shouldn't say primary, as their first exam, but set the CT, which is to be dictated on as their primary study, and that is set to a sequence of one, and they did a 15 minute max time. And if you'll notice, they did set their durations to 30 and to 15 minutes. So probably the CT is normally a 30 minute exam, but since it got its contrast during the fluoro procedure, they only need 15 minutes to do their scan. And in this one, it's a, a nuke med gastric emptying. So this is a one that you can see has more than two exams. It actually has three. And so this is where it gets a little tricky in doing your min and max times. And I find that this takes some testing to get it exactly as you'd want it, because you have to decide what's your minimum wait time from your first exam when you're talking about your third exam in this. So you can see the second exam, which is sequence number one, the two hour return is set at a 30 minute um, minimum and a 30 minute max, where the four hour return is set at 115 for each. So it's a little bit different scenario and um, does take some, like I said, playing around. This is when your test system comes in super handy.
that is all I have for you guys today as far as examples. And if you guys decide to use procedure plans and haven't in the past and need any assistance, please feel free to reach out to us. I'm going to go ahead and, and shut off the recording now and then see if anybody has any questions.